Welcome to this edition of AI for BAs. Today, you have a front row seat to an amazing showcase of AI in action. We're diving headfirst into the agile world of user stories and acceptance criteria with your favorite AI, GPT-4. So buckle up and let's get started. You remember when businesses were struggling to manage these huge, bulky mainframe computers? Trust me, I do. And believe me, it was like having a pet elephant in a studio apartment on the 13th floor. Impossible, right? So fast forward to today, where you can have complex discussions with an AI tool, almost like it was a very knowledgeable and old friend. We live in a different era, my friends. Our journey today begins with a task that challenges a lot of business analysts, adding acceptance criteria to user stories. First off, let's make sure GPT-4 understands the concept and can deliver what I want. This little confirmation exercise ensures that we agree on what acceptance criteria are. Okay, it comes back and says acceptance criteria are conditions that a software product must satisfy to be accepted by a user, customer, or other stakeholders. They define what is to be accomplished for the user's story to be considered done. And they help to ensure that all stakeholders have the same understanding of what the feature or functionality is. I like it. Just to clarify, the real reason I'm doing this check is because if ChatGPT does not deliver the outcome in the manner that I want it, I might have to modify my prompt or add more prompts, give it more examples in some way, shape or form to teach ChatGPT how you want it to be expressed as opposed to how it thinks that the generic or the general public likes to hear it expressed. Oh, it's even giving me a wonderful example to go with. Taking the user story as an online store user, I want to be able to filter products by category so I can quickly find the products I'm interested in. When viewing the product list, I should see a list of categories. Sounds good. I can select one or more categories from the list. Perfect. I will love it. Just a few examples of that. So I think we have a good starting point and I'm generally in agreement with what ChatGPT is offering. So I'm going to introduce it to a proposed mobile app for people with allergies who often eat out due to travel or work. This app would be a godsend for allergy sufferers like me, but it'd also be great for health conscious eaters on the move. Just like taking your personal chef with you who knows exactly what you want and how you want it cooked. Except this time, it's for people who need nutritional information at their fingertips. In case of allergy sufferers, well, that could potentially save their lives. So I wanna make it as easy as turning on a light or in this case, tapping on an app. Next, I'm gonna give ChatGPT4 the user story. As a health conscious eater, I want to be able to easily view nutritional information for each menu item so that I can make informed digital choices about what to order. GPT-4 breaks that down into clear, concise acceptance criteria from accessibility standards to nutritional info, even includes allergen alerts. I really like that. It delivers a lot of valuable ideas. So let's see what we got here. Let's take number two. The nutritional information should be displayed in a clear, readable format and should include at least the following details. Total calories, total fat, saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, sodium, total carb, dietary fiber, total sugars, added sugars, and protein. Okay. Hmm. Let's see what else we got here. Seven, the app should support accessibility standards, making the nutritional information accessible to individuals with vision impairments, color blindness, etc. Okay, getting into the ADA. That's an interesting one. Obviously, these are not necessarily complete, but they sure are a great starting point. However, I'm not personally in love with the way GPT-4 words the criteria, so I'm going to ask it to put them into short phrases for easier reading. Voila, it instantly delivers those. Okay, not instantly, but pretty darn quickly. That shows you how powerful it is. And above all, you can decide for yourself how you want your acceptance criteria expressed. So let's see what it's offering us now. Okay, number two, now reads clear, readable format for nutritional details. Short that one an awful lot, didn't it? Uh, number seven, compliance with accessibility standards. 
actually like that one a lot better because it's much more directly aligned with the AD&D or Americans for Disabilities Act, ensuring that people with disabilities can access this feature. But that isn't all. I give our intrepid AI buddy another user story, but this time I'm asking for it to answer in given when then format, just for the Gherkin fans out there. This user story is for a vendor who needs to update the prices of her menu items efficiently. It reads, as a vendor, I can update pricing information for menu items to ensure that visitors have access to the most up-to-date prices. You know how it is. You're running a restaurant and one day the price of avocados goes through the top. They're not as cheap as they used to be. And that means that your famous guacamole can't be sold as cheaply as it could before. You need to update the price ASAP so that you can continue to deliver quality food without going bankrupt. And the app needs to handle this smoothly. Again, GPT-4 delivers, coming up with a great initial set of acceptance criteria in the requested given when then format. So let's see what it came back with. Given that I am logged in as a vendor, when I view my restaurant's menu items, then I should see an option to edit the pricing for each item. Given that I'm logged in as a vendor and I have selected to edit menu items pricing, when I input a new price and confirm, then the updated price should be saved and immediately reflected on the app. I'll just get on number four. Given that I am logged in as a vendor and attempting to update pricing when I input invalid data, e.g. letters instead of numbers, then I should see an error message and the invalid data should not be saved. For acceptance criteria, I think these are very good. Uh, given a when then statements, obviously if we're moving them into acceptance tests, they're going to become a lot more detailed and have a lot more specific data, but I like what it did. Like before, these may not be a complete list of every criteria you need, but it sure as heck beats starting with nothing. So there you have it, folks. A day in the life of an intrepid BA armed with GPT-4, making the complex world of business analysis look as easy as pie. And by the way, not just any pie, a perfectly baked one with a detailed recipe right in front of you. That's it for now. See you next time in my adventure where an AI writing assistant solves another common business analysis problem.